Do you need the microphone? Oh my goodness. Oh, I get a microphone. <laughs> All right. Hey, you're going to stay out here? No, you want to stay out here. Come out here. Come here. Okay. It's better if you're closer. All right. These are my helpers. Say everybody, yay. Okay. Needless to say, this is going to be dangerous. Uh, where's Sam Ho? Sam? Where are you? Okay. Sam's an EMT for a reason. She's going to be closer to the stage in a minute. And I'm going to help these guys set up. Okay? You guys can just sit down and just enjoy the show. I do not know what's going to happen. A miracle could happen. The opposite of a miracle could happen. Like a canadical. Is that the opposite of a miracle? America, Canada. Have you guys heard about the corduroy pillow? They say it's making headlines. <laughs> Sorry. Just keeping the crowd engaged. <laughs> I need my prop. I need my prop. We have swords, people. Come on. Come on, let's raise the energy in this place. We got Jay Schlotta and two swords. We got Julia, Carl, Jacob. We're really not breaking boards. We're playing a real version of Fruit Ninja. Future Pradeep, and why did you warn me of this? <laughs> Please do not get me fired. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. What? <laughs> oh, my. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> Talent show. Wow, that's actually really amazing. That's incredible. Do you guys see this? It is perfectly down the middle in half. I've never eaten a banana cut like that. Let's make some noise for Jay Schlotta, people! Highland Township, Brandon and Rare, watch it. Ah! Yes! Yes! Ah!
doing things we've never done before tonight. <laughs> Let me read to you a scripture verse. <laughs> so weird coming off that. All right. All right. Colossians 4, 5 through 6 says this. It says, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside Redeeming the time, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. You know what? People should be different. People should be different. Why do we live in a society where everybody's trying to be the same? Everybody's trying to make everybody the same. It's, it's crazy. I mean, campuses have safe spots where you can be safe because you were offended by signs and words and ideas. It's crazy at the time and age we live in. People should be different. We should celebrate differences. Man, there is value in differences. You know, don't just reject somebody because they're different than you, because their talent is different than yours, because their personality is different than yours. Here's what we need to do. We need to realize that Differences in personalities actually complement our weaknesses. They complement our weaknesses. So don't surround yourself with just people who are just like you. Man, don't do that. Here's another thing that you'll learn when you get to know people is that people's personalities don't change. They don't. You know, you can become a better you with maybe habits and rhythms and patterns, but your personality, who you are, it doesn't change. So don't try to change somebody's personality. I love that you took this personality test. You know, who you are really doesn't change. So if you are frustrated with some of the things that you read about yourself, you know, you can always remember those things that maybe you looked at the choleric and you're like, I don't like the fact that it says I'm unemotional. Like, I, I don't know if I, I am that way. I don't know if I like that about myself. Well, you can pay attention to that now and try to correct that and be more intentional with your emotions. But really fundamentally, deep down inside, that's going to be your fallback. All right? That's going to be your natural bent for your life, okay? So here we go. You know, four basic personality types that have been listed in front of you, but I want to go into them in a little more detail. You ready to go with me? All right, here we go. Here we go. Number one is, now, I don't know if it's number one on your piece of paper, but number one in my notes, we call the popular sanguine. And let me read to you Proverbs 15, verse 13. The sanguines love this verse. It says, a happy heart makes the face cheerful. But heartache crushes the spirit. This is the sanguine verse in the Bible. And who is sanguine? Haley Thomas. She, where's she at? Get loud. All right. Haley Thomas is a sanguine. You will just, you know, be around her, and she'll be the life of the party, the big smile, the high energy, usually the loudest one in the room. She won't hesitate to get in your face. 
uh, you know, she's, she's very opinionated and, you know, wants you to know everything, you know, about her opinion. And so that's a Haley Thomas. You know, in the Bible, the, the, the person with the sanguine personality in the Bible was Barnabas. Maybe you can read about him if you want to. But another person that you're probably more familiar with would be Peter. You know, Peter walked on water. You know, Peter was always, his name was always listed first, so most likely because he was the loudest at all, at all the times. And, and everybody just heard him, and he was just out there. And that, that's a Peter. That's a sanguine personality. Here's another thing about sanguines is they want everything to be fun and energized by more people. Sanguines love people. They want everything to be fun and energized by more people. Here's what their workspace looks like. Messy and cluttered. You know, the rooms are messy, Haley. You know, their, their, their closet's messy. Uh, their life is a little bit chaotic at times. They, they won't hesitate to, to maybe steal money out of your piggy bank and for their own needs and desires and leave you little IOUs that say, I'll pay you back later, and they never will. But that's kind of a sanguine personality. They crave people. They crave activity. They crave conversation. If they're alone for too long, they sink into a deep, dark place and depressed in their soul. <laughs> they can be self-centered. You know, it can be all about them. And here's their life motto is, look at me. Look at me, everybody. I'm about to do something. That's my daughter. My daughter says, look, watch, 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 watch. And you're like, as a parent, you know, you can't hear your kid anymore. You're like, mom, dad, 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 dad. What, you know? And that's Charlie. What? Watch, 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 watch. And I finally look at her and she'll go like this. Wow. The, the popular sanguine. Number two, you ready? The perfect melancholy. The perfect melancholy. And here's, here's your verse, all my melancholy people out there. Proverbs 27, verse 12. It says, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The simple pass on and are punished. You know, that's the melancholy verse. You know, you don't go out there, you're going to die. If I give this speech in class, I am physically going to die. You hide. You hide from all this stuff. You know, the perfect melancholy actually in our office, and the one that you might know, is Rachel Jennings. She is a strong melancholy. Now, let me just say this. Nobody is just one. All right? Nobody is just one. You know, it's kind of very rare, actually, to be just one. A Haley Thomas might just be only sanguine, actually. But, you know, Rachel, she has a lot of melancholy in her, but she's got some other things as well, too. So you might see yourself in a few of them or even all four of them. Don't worry. It doesn't mean you're insane, that you need to be hospitalized. You're not bipolar or personality, multiple personality disorder. You're normal. Trust me. But you know what? Who well, You know who in the Bible was a melancholy? Moses. You know, Moses was asked to lead the children of Israel out of slavery, out of Egypt. And, boy, he, had, he needed a lot of convincing to do that task. He was really down on himself. He beat himself up. You know, his excuses weren't, weren't about other people. All of his excuses were about himself. He lacked all this stuff. And so here we go. Here's other things about melancholy. Is they think anything worth doing is worth doing right. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. So they will take their time. And they will work extra hard and really almost at times run their, run their physical bodies really hard to, to finish a task perfectly, you know. And most of the time people don't ask that much out of them, but they demand it from themselves. Their workspace, if you're interested in a melancholy's workspace, is tidy and everything is in its place. That's a melancholy workspace. They are detailed and energized by thinking. So you're going to, you interact with a melancholy person. You're going to ask them to do something. Maybe you're, you're going to ask a melancholy person to do something. And initially, they're going to be very quiet about you telling them to do something. You might be wanting some sort of reaction or some sort of give and take, but they're going to be very quiet about it. And they'll then 
leave the conversation and you you will be very unsure if they're going to do this thing that you've asked them to do. Like, can you pick me up from the airport? Uh, yeah. And then they're done with talking about that. And you hang up the phone and you're wondering, are they really going to get me? But the melancholy person will be the one who will be there. And they'll make sure their schedule works perfectly to get to the airport. And they might even bring a little something for you when they arrive. But it's all a big surprise because, boy, they seem really uninterested when you ask them to pick you up from the airport at first. All right? So this is a melancholy personality. And their motto is this. Their motto is this, is please understand me. That's what they think to themselves a lot. I just wish more people understood me. I wish more people understood how much I loved them. I wish more people understood how great of a friend I want to be with them. I wish more people understood that I want, I want to do this job. They would say, please understand me. All right, number three on your personalities that we're looking here is we've got the, the powerful cleric. The powerful cleric. And who's that that you might know? That's our pastor, Pastor Tim. He's a powerful cleric. In the Bible, the powerful cleric was Paul. Paul was a goer and a doer and a world shaker and a visionary. And he, didn't, he wasn't afraid of dying for Jesus. And he wasn't afraid of making people ticked off about his ideas about God and the future for plans for the people of Gentiles and Israelites. Boy, he was willing to, to ruffle feathers because he had a mission to accomplish. But boy, that, that sanguine would never think like that. Would never think like that. And that the melancholy person would never be as bold and loud like that. Here's what choleric people like. They, they want to be in charge, and they're really energized by setting goals. <laughs> Give this person a, a, a to-do list, and it's goal-oriented with dates and, and growth involved, and they are a they are so energized by that. You know, you, you talk to a choleric person, maybe they're running a business, and you tell them, by the year 2017, I want you to double your profits. And they'll just freak out with excitement and get all energized by that idea. But you, you tell a sanguine person to just get all excited about numbers and profits, and they'll just cry. But you tell a sanguine person, I want you to double your, double your friend's by this time next year, they'll get excited about that. You know, so here we go, choleric. You know, their, their workspace, it reflects function and form. You walk into a choleric's workspace, and you, you sanguines, you will draw heave at the boringness of it all. You would think to yourself, how could anybody think in a space like this? How could anybody do a job in a boring functional space like this? You know, the, the choleric would, would put the toilet right next to their lazy boy. Because function and form right there, son. I could stand up, go like this, sit down, drop a deuce, stand up, go like this, sit down, eat my pizza. That's a cleric right there. Function and form. This all makes sense right here. They, they want results. Boy, if you work for a cleric, you better produce. That's all they care about is producing the, that thing for them. They don't care about relationships. They don't care about if you're happy along the journey. Did you reach your numbers? No? Fired. That's a cleric right there. And some of you can really feel that. Others of you are being scared as I'm talking. You're getting stressed as I'm talking. You're thinking to yourself, how could anybody function like that? There's no way they'd ever live past 50 because they'd for sure die of a heart attack, right? This is your thinking. This is what you're thinking. You know, the clerics, they can be demanding and impatient. And here's their motto. It's do it my way now. That's the cleric motto. Do it my way now. Do it my way and you're going to get it done. But do it right now. That's the cleric. That's my dad. <laughs> my childhood was fun. I told you my dad. I've talked to you about how my dad never let me quit a single thing. Here we go. The number four, the peaceful phlegmatic. The peaceful phlegmatic. Here's their life verse. Proverbs 15 verse 1 is a, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So the phlegmatic, they love the soft answer. Here we go. Here's who the phlegmatic is. Well, it's me. I'm phlegmatic, okay? And also in the Bible, you know who else was phlegmatic? It was Joseph. You see, in every action and decision that he ever made, he decided to 
not ruffle feathers. He, he was uh, kind and caring and polite and gentle and, and patient, right? That describes Joseph, doesn't it? Now, I'm not all phlegmatic. I have a little bit of cleric in me. I've got a little bit of sanguine in me. So you might have a couple different things in you as well. But this really is mainly who I am. Here we are. They're easygoing. They're peaceful, happy, relaxed kind of people. Uh, their workspace is informal and simple. You know, you walk up to a phlegmatic person and, you know, you say, hey, your office could really use a little bit of, you know, something in the corner, like a little vase with a plant coming out of it. And they go, mm, okay, why not? They'd never look at it after that, after you put it in their office, but it's sitting in there. It's simple. <laughs> it's informal. You know, they'd rather not be involved if it causes conflict. They'd rather not be involved if it causes conflict. They may dismiss deadlines and fail to reach goals because they're in no hurry. Did you hear that? They may miss deadlines and fail to reach goals because they're in no hurry. Their life motto is, what difference will it make? Now, why are we telling you about personality types? It's because it's not, it's not just important to know who you are. It's very important to know who you're working with. It's very important to know who your friends are. You know, believe it or not, you know who to call up for the mountain biking ride. You know who to call to go rock climbing. You know who to call up to go to the movies. You don't call the same person for quilting, right? You know who to call up if you want to cry a little bit. And you know who to call up. And you might not even have known it or even recognized it, but you work every day and you live every day with different personality types. And you've functioned quite well with different personality types. But you know what? If you want to become a better leader, then it's even better to understand who you're working with and understand the personalities in your workspace or in your ministry team or in your life. It's very important to know. So here we go. I want to teach you guys on how to connect with these personality types. You ready? If you're dealing with the sanguine, it's your Haley Thomases, give them attention and approval. Right, Haley? Give them attention and approval. They're like that puppy dog. They want to be greeted. They want to be petted. They want, to be, they want attention. They want approval. They don't want to be punished all the time. They, they want to be, you know, taken care of. Oh, it's going to be okay. And they want their belly rubbed. Right? They, they, that's how you deal with the sanguine. You give them attention and approval. If you come down too hard on a sanguine, they'll crumble right before your eyes and cry and turn into a puddle of tears. But that, that's how you deal with the sanguine. Melancholy. If you're dealing with a melancholy personality in your life, you recognize their emotional need for order and sensitivity. I guess they're behind me. Recognize their emotional need for order and sensitivity. Right? That's our Rachel in the office. Uh, things need to be in order. And I can actually tell when you ask her a question, you know, has this arrived yet? Uh, she starts to get a little stressed out if it hasn't arrived yet. You know, if she's ordered and it hasn't arrived yet at the church, she starts to get a little stressed out. Have you made this phone call yet? Have you done that yet? She starts to get a little stressed out because you're stepping on her personality a little bit because she needs order and a bit of sensitivity in that, and she's trying as hard as she can to meet those needs, and when it hasn't arrived on time, she gets a little bit stressed out about that, okay? Cleric, communicate and appreciate them and their work. you got to communicate a lot with the clerics. If you don't communicate enough with the clerics in your life, they will drop you in a second as a friend. <laughs> and they're, they're just all business, all the time, and if they catch wind that you're no longer going to invest into their life, then they see you as an, like an investment opportunity, and when you're not coming, giving back what they're trying to give to you, they're no longer interested in investing into that situation, right? They're all about results. Where they put their time and money and energy into, they want results. They want results. So communicate a lot with the clerics, which is interesting because when you do communicate with the clerics, it seems as if they're uninterested or always busy. Or they want to talk about things that they want to get to the point. But they actually, that, that really feeds their soul with a lot of communication with the clerics. And always let them know that you appreciate them and their work. You know, the clerics are very strong, which actually makes them extremely insecure. See, some of the, with these really high personality types, they have 
really opposite ends of the spectrum. So the clerics, they might seem so strong and so in charge, but really they're very insecure deep down inside, and they need lots of communication to, con- to affirm that their work is doing really well. You understand me? So, hey, I might be just giving you guys great ways to get promoted at work and to get those raises that you've been desperately wanting. Praise the Lord. Wow. All right, here we go. Phlegmatic. Learn to respect them. That's me. Learn to respect them. If we sense that you don't respect us, oh, boy, that's going to hurt us deep down inside, and it'll take us a long time to forgive you. So really learn to to respect them. You know, they might, because the thing is, is we're very kind and we're very, we're very gentle and we don't want to step on your toes. And then when we sense that you're disrespecting us, when we've done so much to be so nice to you all the time, boy, it hurts a lot. You see? You understand that? So this is how to connect with these different personality types. Now listen, here we go. All of these personality types are capable of being leaders. And all of these personality types are capable of being followers, okay? But here we go. The natural leaders, there are natural leaders, are the clerics and the melancholies. They are your natural leaders. Just by sheer uh, getting the job done and being the, like, numbers-oriented, that's your melancholies and clerics, they get the job done and they're numbers-oriented and they're task-oriented, they will naturally be asked to lead things. But everybody can be a leader. And then your natural followers are your phlegmatics and your sanguines. They are happy to follow. They're happy to be involved in the team. They're phlegmatics and sanguines. They're very happy to contribute to the team. They, but at the end of the project, they want to be recognized and respected for the work that they did. Okay. But everybody can be a follower, and everybody can be a leader. Now, the ones that cause the most problems, all right, are your melancholies and your clerics. They ruffle feathers. They, melancholies don't communicate enough. Your clerics get angry when you're not communicating enough. So these people tend to cause a lot of the problems. If you've ever been in a group project, these are the ones that cause problems, Okay, they seem distant. They seem uninterested, and if we're sanguine, and uh, that's very irritating. How could you be so distant and uninterested in a time like this? Don't you know our grade depends on it? You see, and so they they tend to cause a lot of problems. Now, the most loyal ones are your phlegmatics. That's me. Very loyal. You know, uh, they're not they're, they're they're the dogs, not the cats. You know, they're very loyal. Um, they, 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 they'll stick through the hard times and be wet by your side. You know, if, if you married a phlegmatic person, they will take care of you really well when you get sick. Okay? They'll take care of you really well. They'll meet your needs. They'll actually know your needs before you ask them. They'll bring you that big cup of water and you didn't ask for it, that hot bowl of soup, wet when you needed it, but you never asked for it. They're very loyal. The, the most gifted ones, though, are your melancholy, believe it or not. Those are your ones that are really the most gifted, the most needed when it comes to jobs and projects. You're, you're, you're so excited when the melancholy joins the team because you, they take care of all the tasks that all the other personality types really hate to do. That's making the phone calls, making the orders, you know, arriving when things arrive, making sure the shipments come in on time. Oh, they're, they're so needed. They're really the most gifted ones. Congratulations, Rachel. The most naturally loved ones are your sanguines. Everybody loves the sanguines. That's your Haley's. Everybody loves the, the happy-go-lucky, the life of the party, the, the energized by people. Why? Because the more people that come around, the happier they get. So they tend to make a lot of friends. And everybody likes those, loves to be surrounded by friendly people. So they're really the most naturally loved ones. Your most naturally influential ones are your clerics. Naturally influential. We'll, we'll, we'll gather influence without even trying. You know, they will have an idea off the cuff, and they'll explain it with such clarity 
and with such vision of the future, all of a sudden we'll have a team of 10 people. And they didn't even, it was by accident. <laughs> Those are your most naturally influ, in, influential ones, are your clerics. And most people, most of you in here will have mixed personality types. Okay? Now I'm almost done. The, I'm going to teach you, the last thing I want to teach you is how to lead different personality types. It's a 10 st step thing here on how to lead different personality types. Go ahead and throw that up there. There we go. First thing you need to do is you need to know your own personality, all right? To, in order to lead others, you've got to be able to lead yourself first, okay? It's very important to know who you are. When you know who you are, then you can actually begin to surround yourself with people that you're not, things that you're not good at, surround yourself with your weaknesses so that your team is really strong, okay? Here we go. Recognize the personality of your ministry or workplace and home, okay? So you, you've got to be smart. When you go home to your family, recognize your, your place and position in your home. Then you've got to recognize your place and position in your workplace. It'll be very different from your home. At home, you could be very quiet, but in the workplace, you could be the one in charge because you, can, you function differently in different places. So know your personality of your ministry, workplace, and home. Number three, learn the different personalities of your team. Like I said, don't, don't surround yourself with, if you're a sanguine, don't surround yourself with all sanguines when it comes to building a team. That's a mistake, okay? Why? Because you're actually, you know, kind of hurting all the other teams in the, in, around you because each team needs a good sanguine. Each team needs a good sanguine, all right? So fill the team positions by personality. Also, number five, place the team members closest to you according to your weaknesses. I said that already. Number six, motivate your team members according to their personalities. And motivate your team members according to their personalities. This is such good teaching tonight. I'm not preaching. I'm teaching tonight. So here we go. Motivate your team members according to their personalities. I don't talk to Rachel the same way I talk to Pastor Ben. You know, when I walk into Pastor Ben's office... We, we've got longer conversations, really longer conversations about how things are going to work. You know, I walk into Rachel, and I'll have, I'll have a question about something. It'll take less than five minutes. If I walk into Pastor Ben's office with the exact same question, we'll be talking for 40 minutes. Okay? Doesn't mean one's wrong or right. It just means they're different. And I motivate ben, Pastor Ben very differently than I motivate Rachel. Very differently. So mo motivate your team members according to their personalities. Number seven, be careful not to label people. Nobody wants to be labeled. You might, you might be a cleric on that piece of paper, but really you don't want to be treated like that because clerics have bad sides to them. There's, there's negatives to all these, so don't label people, okay? Be careful not to do that. Number eight, teach your team about the different personalities, very important that everybody in your team knows how each of you is functioning. Then you work better as a team. Don't keep this little secret knowledge to yourself. That's not what a good leader would do. A good leader gathers information, sits their team down, and teaches it to everybody so that everybody understands what's going on. Don't be secretive about this stuff. Number nine, four ministry teams with complementary strengths and personalities. Number ten, lead others from their personality style. Lead others from their personality style. So here's the thing. Everybody can be a leader, but you're going to have sometimes people on your team that will actually be stronger than you, a natural, stronger, natural leader. You can lead them well if you lead them from their personality style. So you might be a sanguine put in charge, and on your team could be a really strong cleric that intimidates you, and scares you and makes you cry and they don't even know it. You cry and as you drive home at the end of the day. <laughs> it's all, you've held, you've held this all into yourself. But you can lead them well if you lead them from their personality style. Now, like I said, the cleric, they need to be communicated with a lot and they need to be appreciated for their work. So you got a strong cleric on your team and they're intimidating to you and they're scaring you and they've yelled at you a few times. It doesn't, does it, don't worry. You're still the leader. Then you need to learn how to lead them better. You can lead them better. You can do a better job. So talents and personalities, this has so much to do with, with really your success in life. You know, 
I, I don't think it's necessarily the person who gets the farthest in life with the most natural talents. I really think it's the person who will, who will get farthest in life is the one who knows how to work with people well. Really knows how to read people, read themselves, and understand when, when they're weak. And understand when they can get somebody on the team with the strength that they have weakness in. You know, success isn't necessarily about you being the loudest. Or you being the most talented or you needing the right personality. The, the one who can really work with people and, and deal with people and, and interact with people in the right way. You can get a lot of people motivated. A lot of people moving in the right direction if you can touch their heart and treat them. Treat them with respect. Treat them well, with dignity, right? All right that's it. That's my message. Talent show.